Welcome to part 4 of this tutorial series on mixing. Last time we have had a look at the equalizer and how it works and what it can do. And today I want to put that knowledge to use and do a basic mix of a drum kit. We'll again be working with Cubase and as I said last time Cubase has a um, built-in equalizer on each channel. I also work with Ableton and Reaper and both these workstations don't have a built-in equalizer. So depending on the software that you are using, you might have to load an EQ manually. Other than that, all the steps we are taking today will be the same for you as well then. The project you can see on screen is already roughly mixed, except for the drums. Those we're going to do today. We're going to have a listen to a small section of the song first. Um, I have marked the section that we're going to listen to in the timeline right here and this is going to be a reference. <laughs> so the drums sound flat they are not really in the mix and as you might have heard there is no left and right panning in the overheads going on right now um, I'm gonna put them on solo and go ahead and mix them real quick using uh, left right panning and also the volume faders these four tracks right here are the elements of the drum kit and they are already grouped so let's go The right overheads were a little too uh, soft for my taste, that's why I've turned them up and turned the left overheads down a little. Next up we're going to fine tune the sound by putting equalizer on the elements that need them and I think each element needs an equalizer right here. We're going to start with the kick drum and have a listen first to the dry signal without EQ. Okay, so the kick drum is basically the foundation of our drum kit and that means that there are many low frequencies that we need. And as you could hear, there were a lot of uh, high frequencies in the signal coming from the snare drum and the trumpet. I'm gonna bring up the audio channel settings right here and we're gonna use the equalizer on the track to high cut the signal, which means that we basically taken away the high frequencies. Next I'm going to play back the track again, listen to the um, kick drum on solo and try to boost frequencies that we need, which will be the low frequencies mostly. Um, I'm going to do this while playing the track so I can hear the changes. Okay, so we've cut high frequencies and boosted low frequencies. High cut you see right here and the boost of the low frequencies right here. Next up, we still have um, frequencies in the middle 
that we don't want basically frequencies that kind of make it sound like the kick drum is in a box and those have to go so we're gonna use a parametric EQ with a very very narrow Q to go looking for the uh, frequencies that we don't want in the kick drum Now that we have done that, we still can bring down this band right here to minus 12 dB to guarantee a better cut. And then next we're going to move on to the snare drum and do basically the same thing. Boost the features of the snare drum, bring out the frequencies that we need there, and then we're going to have a listen later. For the snare drum, high frequencies are very important. We're going to low cut first to guarantee that no unwanted frequencies from the kick drum get through. But we still have to keep in mind that the snare drum also has a body that we need to preserve. First we're going to use a high shelf on band 4 though to bring out the high frequencies. It's always a good idea to deactivate the band that you have just used in the equalizer while playing the track to see if you're satisfied with the changes that the EQ does to the signal. Now we're going to use the next band to go looking for frequencies that we don't like again. There's always something and it makes the snare drum sound like it's made of carton or paper or whatever. This works the same way it did for the kick drum. I'm gonna play back the track and have a listen to the frequencies. And there we have it, so now we're going to bring it down to minus 12 dB again. Okay, already the attack of the snare drum is a little nicer. Now we're going to need the body of the snare drum. The snare has usually low mids and normal mids and we're gonna try to boost them with the last band we have. So now the snare has a little more body and the attack is good, we're gonna have a listen to the drum kit on solo. Okay, now we have the snare drum and the kick drum in place. Snare drum you can see here on this track, kick drum underneath. Um, both are now balanced and we have used the equalizer to feature the frequencies that are necessary to have a nice sounding instrument overall. What we still have left are the overheads, both tracks, left and right. And we can use the equalizer in the same way that we used it for the kick drum and the snare drum. I'm gonna skip forward and show you the uh, settings I come up with. 
So this is what the equalizer on the overhead channel right looks like and both channels left and right basically are similar. So the sound of the overheads is way more brilliant. Now we're going to listen to the whole drum kit one more time. Okay, sounds quite nice already. The last step for now will be a low cut on the drum group overall. Um, we're gonna set it to 32 Hz to cut off uh, sub frequencies that basically normal speakers can't handle and they are not really needed in the mix. Okay, so this is how we put equalizer on our drums and how we can mix them to make them sound a little nicer. Finally, I wanted to show you the red track versus the green track. The red track has the unmixed drums and the green track has the mixed drums with EQ on them. So there was the unmixed version, now we're gonna listen to the mixed and EQ'd version. So I hope you could hear the difference between both tracks. Red basically sounds flat, no room, and green has EQ on it, shinier frequencies, way more brilliant sound, and it's roomy, basically. What we're gonna do next time is have a look at the reverb as an effect, and how we can actually get more room on the drum kit or other instruments by using reverb only. Thank you for watching and goodbye.